Over a year ago, in one of the first videos on this channel, I attempted a challenge I knew was going to be almost impossible going into it. Surviving 300 rounds on cornfield without removing any corn and only allowing myself one power to work with, a portable lake. Last time we managed to survive into the 260s. Today, with one more year of experience on our backs, we return for a rematch. Strap in as we face this year-old challenge once more. Let's start off the video outlining what has changed since we last attempted this challenge in update 33. We're now in update 41 and we have access to two more paragons, the wizard and the submarine. We also have several monkey knowledges that now affect paragons, such as paragon of power that makes paragons attack 20% faster if no other tier 5s of that tower is placed on the map, and vigilant sentries now affect the mini sentries from the sentry paragon. Another useful change is that the Boomer Paragon now buffs the attack speed of all primary towers, including Paragons, which is great since the Apex is such a strong tower on this map. Sadly, since update 38, pops from regrow farms no longer get counted towards tower damage, so we no longer have the ability to regrow farm and get a lot of pops to increase the degree of Paragons like we did in the last run. Thankfully, there is another change that counters this. We now have the cash injection feature that allows us to sacrifice cash directly instead of placing towers down. And due to the lack of space in this challenge, this feature helps out a lot to cancel out the removal of regrow farming. Other changes include a reduction in price and increase in uptime for the ultra boost, which will be great for our farming, and the Monkeyopolis has also gone through some overall helpful changes. Last but not least, as I mentioned at the start of the video, we now have one more year of experience on our backs. One year of me making videos, doing difficult challenges and explaining many different aspects of the game has forced me to learn and become a lot better. We begin the game by farming using a bank, a balloon trap and a rubber to gold, and our free dart monkey will be placed in the bank to handle some early camo balloons later on. Once the bank becomes full, we collect the cash, upgrade it to tier 4 and then deposit our money back into the bank. Once the bank is about to become full again, we use the loan ability and then collect and sell the farm in order to get a discount village and then build a BRF. After that, we will upgrade the village to tier 4, meanwhile we remember to retarget the trap over and over to increase its uptime. For the round 40 Moab, we upgrade the balloon trap's middle path to tier 2 for the extra Moab damage and get a 020 NG that will eventually become our ultra boost and we retarget the trap as far away as possible so that we can just barely have time to pop the Moab over the trap. Now, we sacrifice the BRF to the Opolis and get working on yet another top path farm, and we also get the village the middle path cross path to give camo to the balloon traps so we can get the extra cash from those balloons too. That means that we can now go ahead and sell the dart monkey in the back. For many rounds, such as 43, we will need to retarget the trap mid round in order to not leak any balloons as the trap will get overrun by ceramics. After upgrading the uppermost NG to an overclock, it's time to get yet another balloon trap as just one is no longer enough to handle all the incoming balloons. And even so, you will still need to retarget the balloon traps in order to keep up with many rounds. Round 50 was tough to not leak. To pop the Moab here, I needed to get something in the back and I decided with a sniper since we're going to get him there later anyway for his cash generating ability. After upgrading the farm to tier 5, we get the sniper to tier 5 as well and we set all the engines to strong and even cross path the overclock to make him place sentries to help pop the moabs. The next step is to upgrade the overclock to the ultra boost and then a few rounds later we will replace the balloon traps and rubber to gold with a spirit of the forest and more middle path snipers. These towers will give us more popping power for all balloon types while also generating some nice cash and the extra lives from the spirit will allow us to leak balloons and survive some really tight rounds. And here we have our farming setup that we will keep until we start running into some tough rounds in the 90s, at which point we will replace two snipers with two bottom path dart monkeys instead, so we will have some more popping power and start farming pops for our dart paragon. At round 100 we will get the ray of doom and aim the beam towards the end of the track to let our dart monkeys get as much pops as possible yet still survive the rounds. To survive even more rounds we will ultra boost the ray of doom as well but we only do that on long rounds where it won't affect the income from the farm. We need to have the ultra boost up at all times on the farm as long as it is still producing crates. 
On round 112, we replace the last sniper with our hero, Isili. She will level up pretty quickly at this round, so soon we will be able to use her totem and hex to survive longer, although she won't reach level 20 in time for the round 119 bad balloons, so for this round we will micro the Ray of Doom. On round 122, we replace the Spirit of the Forest with an XXXL trap instead, as this tower will also give us a little bit of extra cash while also allowing us to survive longer and we need to start saving up pops for our NG Paragon. On 128, we need more damage, so now we will create our Dart Paragon. Surprisingly, you can often save a bit of money by not maxing out the cash sacrifice, as the last 30,000 or so often don't contribute to even a single additional degree. Here we got a degree 65 Apex, and we saved about 30,000 by not maxing out the slider, which would also have given us a degree 65. Last time we attempted this challenge, we placed a Dark Monkey here at the bottom and the Ninja up top. But this time, we will switch it around, as that will yield more damage for the both of them. We also had to sell Isili in order to fit the tier 5 sacrifices, but that's fine, because we won't need her for a while anyway now that we have the Paragon, and she will level up very quickly once we decide to get her back anyway. We also get a Sniper and the Spirit of the Forest for more cash generation and a Grand Sabo to start farming pops for the ninja. To get more pops on the NG and not let the Apex take down everything, we target the trap to the other side of the cornfield and it is just barely enough range to capture some Moabs on the other side. After keeping the sniper for a while, we get a Seely back once again, and now we can use her totem to give even more range to the NG so he can place his traps even higher up and steal even more pops from the Apex. At round 176, DDTs are getting so fast that the fortified ones mean trouble, so we replace the spirit with a super glue to allow us to keep farming pops for the ninja and the NG even longer. And that super glue made the difference. It allowed us to survive long enough to reach 16.2 million pops on both the NG and the ninja by round 192. First we get the NG paragon and we sacrifice just enough to get a degree 80 and then we do the same thing for the ninja paragon. We now have some more defense. We get the ultra boost back for the farm, and we get a wizard lord phoenix to farm pops for the magus perfectus. This setup is pretty strong so we will be able to keep it for quite a while. To speed up the process of gaining pops on the wizard, we won't only constantly use his ability, but also Isili's totem to give him some more attack speed. We won't get a ton of pops on this guy, but the more pops we get, the more money we will save on the cast injection. At round 249, we sell the village in order to create some more room and sacrifice 1 million to get a degree 60 Magus, and then we use the remaining 2 spots for 2 boomerangs to farm pops for the next paragon. Although, again, we won't be able to gain much pops at all, as rounds at this point are getting very hard. Just 9 rounds later we need more defense, and just getting the Boomer Paragon is not going to cut it. It's time we spend all the cash we've saved up so far. We sell the farm and get the Boomer Paragon to degree 40, and then place down the Portable Lake. Next, we will get a degree 40 Nav Arc, and then a degree 1 Sub Paragon that we will keep submerged. An Absolute Zero to freeze the border, a Legend of the Night for his passive Black Hole ability, and a Super Brittle and Cripple Moab for debuffs. This is our final setup. Much more optimized than last time, but will it be enough? The scaling goes pretty crazy past 250. The speed ramping has now taken a big jump and has reached maximum acceleration, and the HP scaling has taken a big jump in acceleration as well. Adding the boat paragon and all these other towers made the rounds go by pretty smoothly up to about round 280, which is already further than last time. But the rounds quickly get harder and soon we will need to start making use of the Legend of the Night. 287 was really tight, but using every ability we just barely managed to pass it. Here we really needed everything. The last strike ability from the sub paragon was actually what made the difference here even though it was just a degree 1. In update 41.2, Ninja Kiwi decided to move a lot of the sub paragon's bonus boss damage to normal damage instead to make it more powerful in free play situations just like this, and I of all people am quite grateful that they did so. 
292 was the first round that I needed to use the Legend of the Knights Black Hole ability to leak the final few bad balloons. This passive ability has a global cooldown of 3 minutes that can't be affected by selling and rebuying the tower, so if you get two really tough rounds in a row, it's game over. Round 298 was as close as it could get. This one took quite a few attempts and I thought I was going to stumble on the finish line, but after a good while I beat it with a few pixels to spare. Round 299 was impossible to beat without the Legend of the Night, but with it there was just enough time for the black hole to remain open to catch the last two bad balloons. And here we are one year later, round 300 without removing any corn. This is what makes an evolving game so much fun. If it's not possible today, use the time to get better and wait for the right time to strike again. Leave the video a like if you enjoyed it, use code MACANRULES in the Bloon Store to support me, and subscribe so you don't miss any of the future challenges that we will take down together, and I will see you in the next one.